Hi, mid-month book fash vlog time. I'm a day behind yesterday. Total write-off, not even possible. Uh, today is Saturday the something, 15th of May. It's about 10.30. I've been to the markets this morning and that was lovely. Went and did my Aldi shop and I've written a list put all the groceries away and written a list of all of the things to eat and what can be cooked for dinner. So everybody knows what they can eat and everybody can take care of their own meals and things like that. And I am retreating. Today should be the first day of my cycle. So my moon time is retreat and come into the granny flat and hang out. If you've been around for a while, you know that. So it's the perfect time to join in on the mid-month book bash. Uh, one thing I did do yesterday, and I want to show you what I got. I went to the library book sale and I had a meeting in the morning. So I didn't get there till about midday. So it was slim pickings, but I thought I'd show you what I got just in case you're interested. And I probably need to work out myself what I got. There's lots of, I was drawn a lot to historical fiction. I don't know. I got this. And this is set in 1502. And it's like political corruption in the real Borgia family. Should I know who that is? Something about a Pope? I don't know. I got Sand Archive by Gregory Day. I read this when? I read this for the Stellar, I think. Oh no, I can't have. It's by a male. Maybe I read this for the readings prize? Something like that. Maybe in 2018 or 19 or something. I don't know. But I kind of liked it. And I wanted my own copy of it. So it was there. This was fill a bag for 12 bucks, by the way. So you just pick up everything that you see. Oh, I got my own copy of The Long View, even though it's a bit beaten up. This was one of Sean the Book Maniac's favourite books of last year. And I'm still working on my booktube Tinder stuff to read through my favourite booktubers' favourite books of last year. But I have read this and I did love it. And so I got my own copy. Oh, this is one of my favourite books. It's in my top 10. And anytime I find cheap copies of my favourite books, I get them so that I can give them to other people because... If I could give it to you right now, I would. This is an amazing book by an amazing Australian author. So I would highly recommend reading that book. Oh, yeah, I got this. This is by a New York writer. And it's a story of a Japanese boy who becomes a monk and then he is ordered to open a temple in Brooklyn in New York. I don't know. It seems bizarre, but I couldn't leave it behind. I don't know. Oh, this is an Australian book. Yeah. Her son's actions shatter Marion's life and he, he must die because she's grieving. So this is set um, in south of Western Australia and I don't know much about that part of my country. So yeah, I'm really excited. Borderlines, I don't know. So British lawyer Paula gets recruited by this guy who's representing the African state of North Durar, which has border issues with its giant neighbour. I don't know who its giant neighbour would be. But anyway, I'll find out when I read this book. Refugee stories, I think. I hope. Tom Keneally very famous Australian author we all know Tom but um, I haven't read many of his books to tell you the truth so it says when Tom Keneally discovered by chance at the National Gallery of Victoria that Betsy Balcombe a young girl living on St Helena while the Emperor Napoleon was exiled there had become the Emperor's intimate friend and annoyer and had then emigrated with her family to Australia so he was impelled to begin another novel exploring the intersection between the ordinary people of the world and those we deem exceptional. So this woman became a friend of Napoleon and then moved to Australia. That's got to be a good story, right? Oh. 
Yeah, I don't know. This is something about a guru in India. I think it's a novel. Um, but everybody thinks this person's a guru, but this is kind of the behind the scenes look at what that person's really like. Ooh. Right, this is set in a f over a few days time and this Sri Lanka in the Sri Lankan civil war and this father then asks this soldier to marry his daughter and it's kind of about them getting to know each other, I think. I don't really know. And then I got an Edith Wharton book. It's really ugly, isn't it? I don't know why I picked that up. So there you go. There's a book haul to start the mid-month book bash. I had goals to try and do the 24 hour thing over the four days, but because I didn't read anything yesterday, that's going to prove quite difficult. Um, oh, here. Here's the books that I have on offer. So these are all the books that I'm kind of in the middle of. And there's all different reasons as to why I'm in the middle of them. So let me tell you my mid month book bash plans is to read all these books. So, um, let's, shall we just, I'll just, I'll just go through them. You'll see me reading it, so I'll hold it up then. This is, um, New Zealand book, and there's reasons why I want to read that book. There's a prize over there. It didn't win the prize, but I, it was the only one on the shortlist that I found in the library, so when we get to it, I'll let you know more. There's The Bass Rock, which just won the Stella by Edie Wilde. So I've started it. I got a bit annoyed with it, so I put it down. Um, there's A House Without Windows. Um, Books and Lala has the buzzword -a happening, with the buzzwords being House and Home for May. So I got this from the library because it was on my Goodreads Want to Read list. Um, I'm nearly done with this one, but we need to talk. Um, I'm reading The Cider House Rules. It's great. I'm halfway through, maybe. Yeah, halfway through. And yeah, I'm loving it. But I'm just kind of been picking it up each day and trying to read a chapter. But yeah, we'll talk more. Um, the House of Special Purpose. Lots of house books, right? So that, yeah. When I talk to you about this one, we'll talk about this one. That's a John Boy novel. And then Bleak House. Because of the house, but also because I need to read through my, the top 10 Victorian, oh, ages ago maybe two Victobers ago, I went through and sort of got everybody's recommended Victorian novels and from that collated list of the top 10. And I'm supposed to be reading through them all and I haven't done anything. <laughs> I've read three. So I thought because House was the buzzword and Bleak House is on that list, I'd start Bleak House. So there's that. But right now after all this chatting, I need a cup of tea and just to uh, chill out. So I need to make my bed too, but I'm I'm washing I'm washing sheets so I have clean sheets for tonight. Right, I'm gonna go lie out and look out and just chill out for a second because I just kind of got home, and then we'll talk when I pick up a book. tea and I've had my toast and I'm ready to read. <laughs> I'm gonna pick up the cider house rules. Oh you can't even see that. There we go. I am there. It's a big book. Um, 214 pages in and it's a 550 something book so I'll just read a um, chapter and see how I go. This is really famous. Is this a movie? Maybe. I don't know. But when the Books and Lala's Buzzwordathon thing came out, I went into my Goodreads Wanna Read thing and typed in House and Home. And this was the top rated book on my Goodreads Wanna Read list that had House or Home in the title. So I'm loving it. I'm really enjoying it. 
Um, if you're like me and hadn't heard what this was about, <laughs> this is about Homer, Homer Wells. Is that the is that the guy? It's been a few days since I've read it. No, Wilbur Larch is the doctor. He's running an orphanage. Um, he is an obstetrician, but you learn how he gets to the point where he starts to perform abortions within the orphanage as well. It's set at the start of the 1900s in America somewhere. So it's really, yeah, quite taboo for this to even be talked about. So he's, you know, taking lots of chances. And then there's Homer Wells, who's an orphan there, who's been tried to be fostered out, but for no fault of his own, just hasn't happened. And it's kind of been taken under the wing of Dr. Larch and he loves him like a son and Homer loves Wilbur like a father and it's a beautiful relationship and it's like a big warm hug. The doctor has shown Homer how to perform, like deliver babies and also how to perform abortions. Um, this kid hasn't even been to school, I think he's 16 or 17 or 18 or something like that, but he knows all about babies. <laughs> it's very cool. Um, but he's Tatus taking a stand and he doesn't want to perform the abortions. So there's this kind of moral back and forth happening between the two, which is interesting to look at. Um, yeah. And then I've gotten to the point in the book where Homer's, oh, I don't want to tell you spoilers, but maybe it is. If you, I don't know. If you, I don't know. Maybe everybody knows what this story is about. Anyway, I've gotten to the point in the book where Homer has left the orphanage to go with these people who, and the guy owns this big apple growing company. And so that's where I'm thinking all this cider house stuff comes in. I don't know if he's bringing apples back to the orphanage or whether he stays with the apple farm, whatever. I'm about to find out. Anyway, there you go. There's a quick rundown on the cider house rules. So I've just boiled the kettle again. I'm going to sit, I'm going to sit here and read a chapter, which is about 50 pages. And I need this warm hug today, so that'll be good. Hopefully it remains that way. One thing I will say about this book, that's right, the last chapter was frantic. It was full on. And I, I the pace of this so far has been cosy and comforting and getting to know the Doctor has been amazing because he's so awesome. And I've really enjoyed that. But the last chapter... We had someone die, we had an abortion performed, we had, you know, the Homer being going away from the orphanage. We had so many different people's perspectives in the one chapter. Um, we had the station master, we had the station master's assistant. We introduced to all these different people that I, I think will never come in again throughout the book. And it was just John Irving described the place and the setting through people by describing people, by giving other people's perspectives, all that sort of stuff. So it was just this kind of frantic pace that just changed it up for me. But worked really well because the theme of that chapter was really intense. So, yeah, super interesting how that was written. Anyway, that's just a little observation that I remember. Okay, I'm going to read it down. I'll tell you some more observations soon, I guess. I don't know whether to start the clock and just see how many hours I read for or just see how many books I can get through. I think I'll just do that. I don't need any pressure. Just no pressure, this little mid-month book bash. This is just tally taking it slow. Okay, I'll talk to you in a second.
like that, it's five o'clock. I've read 50 pages today. I just finished the chapter. I've been eating and slowly moving my way through the day, lying next to the boys, I don't know, watching everybody do things. <laughs> it's been a wonderfully slow day. I'm just, yeah. Anyway, so I've read the next chapter. So I'm up to page 265 now. I'll just keep plodding through this book. Um, I'm still enjoying it. And that frantic chapter I spoke about at the start of all this kind of segued into a, a, a new way of being for the book and for the, the two characters. So yeah, it's, it's a shift I, I don't know, maybe I knew it was coming. I don't know. It's a shift I didn't really need. So I'm just trying to adjust to it. There we go. So I'm going to put this down for the day, now that it's taken up all my day. Let's talk about what I'm going to do next. So this is the House Without Windows. Um, I am on page 249 of a 400 page book. So I don't have that much more to go on it. However, this is where I'm at with this book. Um, this is a story about a woman, I'm assuming that's her, and she got found in the courtyard of her house. She's in Afghanistan. Sorry, we're in Afghanistan. She got found in the courtyard of her house um, with her husband dead on the ground with a hatchet in the back of his head. Um, and she claimed she didn't do it, got shipped off to jail. We also follow the perspective of a, a boy who was born in Afghanistan but grew up in America and has gone back to Afghanistan as a lawyer and he's representing her. Um, this is a story that had a mystery, you know, did she kill him, yada yada. And um, th that was really the only reason I was reading. It had an interesting commentary on, you know, the rights of women under the Taliban regime, which I, I've read a fair few books about before, so I understood, but it's a... a an interesting thought was that this woman, when she was in jail, was feeling the most free she had in her life. Um, she married an asshole and yeah, and she, you know, was raising babies and kind of in jail, she didn't have anything to do. So she was feeling really free about that, which was an interesting perspective. But ultimately it wasn't great writing. It, it was it was a story and I was there for the story. So the only thing that was keeping me there was did she or did she not kill her husband? And there we found out what happened. I won't tell you either way in case you wanna read it. And now I'm just not interested. I, I don't really care what happens now. I'm not invested in her as a character. I don't feel this great sense of pull towards her I don't think it it died deep enough into who she really is it had a lot of other characters in the prison that it, it got into and you know maybe for me to be more invested in her I needed more of a dive into her so I'm going to take the bookmark out mark this as a DNF and move on I did just watch Sean's um Friday reads I don't think he bailed on anything this week so I'm channeling the bailing. So I'm going to start with this one as my next house book. Um, this was the second highest rated book on my Goodreads Want to Read list that had the word house in it. John Boyne. Um, I loved Hearts Invisible Furies. Is that right? Loved it. Loved A Letter to the Sky. My God, I loved A Letter to the Sky. I love his writing. So yeah, I'm excited to get into this. Um, so this starts in Russia at 1915 and this guy takes a bullet for this Russian imperial family member and is a hero. And then he's like rocketed to, you know, security fame. <laughs> and he becomes the bodyguard to Alex, 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 I, how do you say that? A-L-E-X-E-I, Romanov. The only son of Tsar Nicholas II. So he moves on up. And then it jumps to 65 years later. Where he's visiting his wife, Zoya, as she lies dying in a London hospital. 
So something's gone down there, hasn't it? So yeah, that's what I'm going to start now. So I might just have a little read and get into it. Um, I just made my cozy bed for the evening. I don't know where my family is. They left a while ago and I haven't seen them. So that's okay. I'm okay with that. So let me see whether John Boyne's gonna capture me again with this one. I'll talk to you and let you know how I go. I just walked outside to get something and saw this sunset. Isn't it gorgeous? Oh my God. Winter skies are my favorite. You move from the orange across to the pink. We're going to stay inside. Oh my God, that's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, we need to stay inside. It's so cold out there. It's supposed to get down to one degree Celsius tonight. Yeah, I don't really know what that means in Fahrenheit, but bloody cold anywhere in the world, I would say. So let's watch the sunset from in here and read that book. I feel like reading. I'm going to go get it. Oh, I really love where I live. I really do. God, that's beautiful. Okay. gosh one chapter down and I'm already crying I can't I can't do the end of life stories especially with people with old people that you know this husband is sitting beside his wife who's got very advanced ovarian cancer that's so sad that stuff I'm gonna take a break and do some writing oh I'll take a breath god that was an intense first chapter completely sucked in already John Boyne style okay oh sit up can you see me it's hot I'm just I just have the lamp hi, hi. <laughs> looking sharp um okay I'm 50 pages into this this is going to jump between timelines which is my least favorite way to experience a book because I always want to stick to the one timeline and if they don't complement each other well then I get frustrated but we'll see how this one goes I mean it's okay second chapter I got introduced to a young Gregor Gregor Georgie George Georgie I don't know I have to look up the pronunciations of these Russian names and the jumped in front of the royal dude has happened so there's that um, I'm intrigued, but it's not amazing writing. It's a good story again. So we're in that space again. And I, I think I need something a bit more at the moment. So I'm going to put this down for now. I did the 50 page thing. So I did 50 page. That went a lot faster than the other 50 pages, right? So I'm going to go and make some toast. And then I might pick up another book. And I think I'm going to fall asleep to that book because, you know, it's 7.30. It's past my bedtime. <laughs> I'll be back in a second after I've devoured my toast and veggie mite. And just like that, it's bedtime. Can you see my eyes are closing? I fall asleep watching, how much after this? Well, I used to watch chiropractors cracking up people's backs. Now I fall asleep to cafe vlogs, people making drinks. And there was something I watched the other night about mass production of rainbow cakes in Korea. ASMR. It's just the noise of them cooking the cake. How weird is that? So I'm going to do that and fall asleep. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow for day three of the mid-month book bash. Let's hope I can get some more reading in. Okay, thanks for enjoying a slow day with me. Good night.